Okay, so we say this Jara Malaba prayers, and it's uh, again, it's like an invocation, it's an invocation begging for the Lord to be with us, to guide us in our discussions. Jaya Radha Bhadava Kunjapi
All glory is to the Son of the Lord. All glory is to the Son of the Lord. All glory is to the Son of the Lord. All glory is all glory to the Son of the Lord. All glory is all glory to the Son of the Lord. All glory is all glory to the Son of the Lord. Om Namo Bhagavate So today is uh, 
we're going to discuss on the last text of chapter 14 in the matter of the three modes of material nature. This is the conclusion. In every thesis, there is a conclusion. So this thesis on the, the, most, the three modes of material nature, Lord Krishna is concluding with this text. So, the summary uh, of the whole, the whole chapter is like embedded in this very text. Sum and substance of it, Krishna is declaring himself as the basis, as the foundation, as the bedrock of all, <coughs> all existence. And he's giving us information about his uh, non-dual nature. But that non-dual substance, non-dual transcendental substance is approached uh, from three different angles or two, three different dimensions. This is uh, one of the foundational uh, texts uh, in uh, the Vashon philosophy. This text is also extended uh, uh, to the discussions uh, of the Srimad Bhagavatam. We see that in the in Prabhupada's comments. So, <clears throat> let's go to the text. So, chapter 14, Bhagavad Gita, text 27. Brahmano hi pratista pratistaham Brahmano hi pratistaham Brahmano hi pratistaham Amritasya Amritasya Vyayasacha Amritasya Vyayasacha Saspatasya chadarmasya Saspatasya chadarmasya Sukhasya kantikasacha Sukhasya kantikasacha Brahmano hi pratistaham Brahmano hi pratistaham Amritasya vyayasacha Amritasya vyayasacha Saswatasya chadarmasya Saswatasya chadarmasya Sukhasya kantikasacha Sukhasya kantikasacha Can someone try? Brahmano hi pratistaham Brahmano hi pratistaham Amritasya vyayasya cha Amritasya vyayasya cha Shashvatasya cha dharmasya Shashvatasya cha dharmasya Sukhasya kantikasya cha Sukhasya kantikasya cha Anyone else? Males? Okay, females? Ladies? Brahmano hi pratistakam. Brahmano hi pratistakam. Amritas yavya yasya cha. Amritas yavya yasya cha. Sasvat yasya cha dharmasya. Sasvatas yasya cha dharmasya. Sukas yasya kantikasya cha. Sukas yasya kantikasya cha. Any more ladies? All right. One, point, uh, one to one, so today no one. Liz are not admitted to build, build the man. It's a tongue twister. Huh? This one's a tongue twister. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ladies, you know, every gathering we go, we say, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. So the ladies are always having an upper hand. So why don't you beat the men also today? Oh, well, yeah. Another lady could just make a mark and. Uh, I'll try. Okay, please do. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
see, see, the point is, the proper wanted us to recite the verses. So it's a, we, we are all in the school of learning. Spiritual life is the process of learning. And uh, if we try to do, we will make some effort to do something, we get purified. Just by having the desire to do it, we get purified. We get some reciprocation from Krishna. Uh, because Krishna actually reciprocates not only by what we do, but just by our desire to perform some service to Him. So this is also service. We are reciting the verse, and others are hearing, we are also hearing, and that is highly purifying. It's called Kirtan. So it's not like uh, a process of exercising one's erudition, but it's a service. A service that entails purification. So if we don't understand these uh, min minute details, then you know we could, go, we, could, we could be so reserved and not be you know upfront to be able to participate in in this Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada always was appreciative of you know if you listen to his classes in most of the classes in the West, uh, if he finished the class, he says, oh, "Thank you for participating in this Krishna consciousness." <laughs> and so it is a participative process. Huh? So please have that in mind. So what for what translation? Brahmanaha Brahmanaha of the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. Of the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. He suffered. Patista Patista the rest. The rest. Aham. Aham. I am. I am. Amrita Sha. Amrita Sha. Of the immortal. Of the immortal. Avyayasya of, of, of the imperishable. Cha also. Saswatasya of the eternal. Cha and Dharmasya of the constitutional position. Of the constitutional position. Sukasya of happiness. Of happiness. Kantikasya, Kantikasya, ultimate, ultimate, Cha, also, also. So translation by the language is confirmed. Cha, Shila Bhajan bring the back to the dance from Prabhu Maharaj Ki. Cha, Shila Bhajan Ki. Cha, Shila Bhajan Ki. Cha. Translation. I'm the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, imperishable, and eternal, and is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness. Please can you respond for a bit. And I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman. And I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, which is immortal, imperishable, imperishable. Eternal, eternal. Um, and eternal, and eternal, and is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness. And is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness. Purport. The constitution of Brahman is immortality, imperishability, eternity, and happiness. <laughs> Brahman is the beginning of transcendental realization. Paramatma, the super soul, is the middle the second stage in transcendental realization, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the ultimate realization of the absolute truth. Therefore, both Paramatma and impersonal Brahman are within the Supreme Person. He is explained, it is explained in, mm, it is explained in the seventh chapter that material nature is the manifestation of the inferior energy of the Supreme Lord. The Lord impregnates the inferior material nature with fragments of the superior nature and that is a spiritual touch in the material nature. When a living entity is, when a living entity conditioned by this material nature begins the cultivation of spiritual knowledge, he elevates himself from the position of material existence and gradually rises up to the Brahman, 
conception of the Supreme. This attainment of the Brahman conception of life is the first stage of self-realization. And at this stage, the Brahman realized person is transcendental to the material position, but he is not actually perfect in Brahman realization. If he wants, he can continue to stay in the Brahman position and then gradually rise up to Paramatma realization and then to the realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There are many examples of this in Vedic literature. The four Kumaras were situated first in, in, in the impersonal Brahman conception of truth, but then they gradually rose to the platform of devotional service. One who cannot elevate himself beyond the impersonal conception of Brahman runs the risk of falling down. In Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that although a person may rise to the stage of impersonal Brahman with, without going further, with no information of the Supreme Person, his intelligence is not perfectly clear. Therefore, in spite of being raised to the Brahman platform, there is a chance of falling down if one is not engaged in devotional service of the Lord. In the Vedic language, it is said, Rasa Vaisaha, Rasam He, Ever Young, Labda Wanandi, Bhavati. When one understands the personality of Godhead, the reservoir of, all, or reservoir of pleasure, Krishna, he actually becomes transcendentally blissful. This is extract from the Tetraya Upanishad 271. The Supreme Lord is full in six opulences, and when a devotee approaches him, there is an exchange of these six opulences. The servant of the king enjoys on an almost equal level with the king. And so eternal happiness, imperishable happiness, and eternal life accompany devotional service. Therefore, realization of Brahman or eternity or imperishability is included in devotional service. This is already possessed by a person who is engaged in devotional service. The living entity, although Brahman by nature, has a desire to lord, to lord it over the material world. And due to this, he falls down. In his constitutional position, a living entity is above the three modes of material nature. But association with material nature entangles him in the different modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Due to the association of the three modes, his desire to dominate the material world is there. By engagement, by engagement in devotional service, in full Krishna consciousness, he is immediately situated in a transcendental position and his own and his unlawful desire to control material nature is removed. Therefore, the process of devotional service, beginning with hearing, chanting, remembering, the prescribed nine mentors for realizing devotional service, should be practiced in the association of devotees. Gradually, by such association, by the influence of the, of the spiritual master, one, one's material desire to dominate is removed. And one becomes firmly situated in a lost transcendental loving service. This method is prescribed from the 22nd to the, to the last verse of this chapter. Devotional service to the Lord is very simple. One should always engage in the service of the Lord, should eat the remnants of foodstuffs offered to the deity, smell the flowers offered to the lotus feet of the Lord, see the places where the Lord hmm, had his transcendental pastimes, read of the different activities of the Lord, his reciprocation of love with his devotees, chant always the transcendental vibration, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And observe the fasting days commemorating the appearances and disappearances of the Lord and his devotees. By following such a process, one becomes completely detached from material activities. One who can thus situate himself in the Brahma Jyoti or the different varieties of the Brahman conception is equal to the Supreme Presidente of God in quality. Oma Gyanan Timiranda Sya, Gyanan Jana Sarakaya, Saksurum Melitam, Jyena Tasmai, Si Gurabe Maha. Si Chaitama Nobis Tam, Stafi Tam, Jyena Bhutale, 
Swayam Rupam Kadamaya, the dart is swa, Padantika. Once a Kalpatari Becha, Kripa Sundu Biavacha, Patitanam Pavan and Bio, Vashna Vibio and Moon. Now Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pista Bhutali, Sirmati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Yitinam. Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Gora Vani Pacharini, Nirvisesa Sonya Bhadi Pasachari Sakari. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadara Sri Vasadi Sri Gaur Bhakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Hare So again welcome to Trinity Second Avenue Marshall's Gifts uh, he right here in New York and like I always mention that it, uh, before we we'll, uh, have action in classes uh, this is the very first place that Srila Prabhupada, the founder of Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, this is his is first temple. And so, those of you who are uh, coming to this place, uh, this is not different from, it's not different from Vrindavan because this, this temple has been there. This is a, a place where Prabhupada has uh, used for his worship personally. This is where he started a movement, he started teaching people in the West. He started all here. And so this place is uh, it's, it's a theater. <laughs> so you're lucky. If even you don't have the time to go to India or go to Mayapur, you go to Vrindavan, you come here, you're right in the theater, in the holy place. If you, if you all you will remember and honor that, that would be great. <laughs> so, uh, that's one popular verse in the, uh, in the Bhagavatam, Vedanti uh, Tattva Vedas, Tatwam Yagyanam Advaya Abrahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavan Iti Sajjati Brahman Paramatma <coughs> and uh, Bhagavan uh, Impersonal Brahman or the Brahman Jyoti uh, Everybody, everybody here uh, including me, including my humble self uh, we, have, uh, we have some radiation some light and the, the more you become very advanced in spiritual life uh, you can see that radiation uh, on, I mean, emanating from, you know, people, especially, you know, their, uh, the area of their, their, their face. And so that is called, Brahma, uh, that is called Brahman, that all impersonal light. And that impersonal light, uh, basically, where do we get that? Location mentions in the Gita that, in this very Gita, Lord mentioned that everyone is his part and parcel. So we do acquire qualities that Krishna originally has. So Krishna also has that effulgence. But he is so powerful. He's so dazzling. He's so blinding. <laughs> and so that very impersonal aspect of Krishna permeates the whole of the universe. And the sun is basically a reflection of Krishna's brand. Brahman Jyoti. And so when we talk about Brahman, we're talking about God. When people say God is light, they're, they're, they're right. But uh, they, uh, that is a relative truth. <laughs> relative truth in the sense that it is not absolute. When we talk about light, you see this, uh, this, this, is, this is light. So light is basically coming from the powerhouse. So the light is the energy, the powerhouse is the energetic source. So when we talk about effulgence or Brahman effulgence or Brahman or God is light, yeah, God is light. The light is an energy, and energy is connected with energetic. What, what about the energetic? Light does not just come from nowhere. Light comes from the powerhouse. Light is generated from a powerhouse. So about the Brahman, so Lord Krishna mentions in this text here, that with which is concluding, concluding this very uh, chapter, that he is the basis of impersonal Brahman. And so, in the Bible time it is mentioned that, you know, Vedanti <clears> Tattva <throat> Vedas, that, you know, this non-dual substance is known by the transcendentalists as the Brahman, the uh, Paramatma and Bhagavan. I mean, it's like if you look at if your train is passing, it's a night. Someone far off will just see the beaming light of the train, so bright. And he may conclude, or she may conclude, 
especially in the villages, someone may conclude, oh, that train, that what I know, what I've heard about train, is it's just light, a beaming light. <laughs> I would say it's a beaming light. Yeah, that may be right, but that light is connected with some something. Light does not come from nowhere. So the Brahman effulgence, uh, or the spirit that we're talking about, that God is spirit, I mean, this is a very, very common concept in, in most traditions, like in Christianity and in other uh, in traditions. Uh, we understand that, you know, it's general conception, God is light. God is spirit. Yeah, it's true. But it's a relative truth. Relative in the sense that there is, there is a higher principle. Because we can't say uh, a torchlight or a flashlight is not coming, it's not, someone is not using a flashlight. If we see the, if we see the beaming light, you know, it's flashing, someone is, someone is, <laughs> someone is responsible for that, <laughs> you know, for that. So, we can't just conclude, ah, it's also beaming light. Also, okay, you go to the traffic, uh, to the junction, you see the traffic light. Or you're moving along the street, driving, you see the traffic light. You may say, oh, this automatic light, that's amazing, America, oh, wow. <laughs> it's being operated by, you know, by some engineers, remotely, from a particular source. And so, the Bhagavatam explains that this very Brahman effulgence of the Lord is not the ultimate. It's the is the first stage in God realization. Is the first stage in God realization. So this text is characterizing or is describing the qualities of that Brahman effulgence. If you attain Brahman effulgence, what are your qualities? What are your experiences? I mean, if we attain Brahman, Brahman realization, we don't have business with enjoy, uh, material enjoyment anymore. No sex. No looking for sweets to eat around around the corner. We will not be going to the burger burger shop to look for you know. Uh, oh, give me this, but don't give me the meat. <laughs> some of people, some of people do that, right? <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. Just give me you know, give me the stew, but don't put the meat. <laughs> so. The point is, we will not search for anything else. It's just the first stage of God realization, the first stage of Krishna, or realizing Krishna. When we attain that stage, finish. Why? Because here it is mentioned. It's characterized by eternity, immortality, imperishability, happiness. Who here doesn't want to be happy? In fact, our very, our very slogan in Krishna consciousness is, Chant and be happy. We are looking for happiness. I don't want. I don't. I'm not looking for happiness. Raise up your hand. I don't see any hand. So I presume that everyone <laughs> is looking for happiness. <laughs> and therefore, that is just that one of the concomitant factors of realizing Brahman fortunes. It's an accompanying, you know. Like if I, if you have. If you have a child who likes to play with a uh, with a tire, a uh, vehicle tire, so the, the the child will say, "Hey, dad, hey, mom, I need I need my tire to run around, you know, in the yard." But if you have a limousine, you, they, but you buy the limousine, they, they give you a spare tire. You don't need to go to the to, to the uh, to some store to buy a tire for your child. There's a spare tire that comes with your limousine, so you can give your child to play with it. I mean, can give the spare tire to, for your, to your child to play with. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, if you attend Bhagawan, you already attend I mean, you already attend the Brahman effulgence. You don't need extra effort to be able to I mean, to pursue that. Happiness is already there. And so the Paramatma, Paramatma realization is also described in the, in the Bhagavatam as that stage that you know a number of the uh, here in Garbas or the yogis. The, that is the stage he attained. I, I remember uh, one of these Greek philosophers when he was uh, uh, when he was about to be put to death, when they found him guilty, they prosecuted him, found him guilty. 
the, uh, during the allocutus, this he said, "So what have you got to say? You, you're you're doomed. Yeah, you, you know, you're condemned to death. What's your last? What have you got to say?" And his response was, "Hey, you have to catch me first. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot kill me, except you catch me. Can you imagine if somebody has been, you know, condemned to death, and they are giving me a chance to present his, I mean, his last what what." What, what message you have for your family? Or what have you got to say in this court before you, before you moved out? He said, hey, first you have to catch me. <laughs> that is a very high realization. Super high realization. <laughs> so we're talking about Vaishnava philosophy, but Look, this, 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 I'm talking about a Greek philosopher. You see the consciousness of people on the planet? How? There, there are different gradations of consciousness. And so, one who realized the Paramatma is completely different. He's experiencing that not only the sad. But he's also experiencing uh, that ananda, bliss. And he's feeling completely aloof from, you know, from the material body. Completely aloof. He's, he's seeing a difference. He is not, he's not really attached to the material body anymore. He's free from all attachments to the material body. Others are looking for, he's seeing beyond the material body. In fact, those who have attained that level, they don't see they don't see material bodies, a beautiful woman or handsome man or something. No, they don't look at that. A dog or a cow. Or, no, they don't look at they, they don't see those bodies. And therefore they have respect for every 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 embodied soul. They pay obeisance even to the dogs. Why? Because they are seeing the super soul in the dog. They're not seeing the but the dog's body. So sometimes we hear this type of uh, stuff. I don't want to. What? Where are these Krishna people? What are they talking about? But it's not about Krishna people. What's the name of that great philosopher who told him he, uh, he's the, uh, the people who condemn him to death that first year? Socrates. Socrates. So, yeah, so, Socrates. Now, who amongst us here that, you know, you're about to be executed, you're condemned to death? And you have the gods, the courage, to tell. <laughs> that, no, no, yeah. Hey, man, I'm not this body. You don't, you're not giving me. <laughs> uh, you, you, uh, you, we are not that realized. Again, you find the case of uh, Haridas. Haridas was whipped. I mean, 20, 22 marketplaces also. And the idea was to kill him, but he couldn't die. <laughs> so the, the, the people who had, you know, who were de uh, delegated to do that service, service in court, to kill him, beat him, beat him to, to death. They got afraid. They were scared that, hey, we're not able to do our duty, you know. <laughs> so this guy is going, to, is, is going to educate us. So how did that, out of pity, he pretended to be dead. That is a different consciousness, a very high realization. Then you beat them and it doesn't feel the pain. Lord Chaitanya was the one who's accepting all of those beatings. Who says there is no God? When even the Greek philosopher Socrates, Socrates, right? Yes. Even Socrates said, before you kill me, you have to catch me. How are you going to catch your soul? This is something to ponder on. Because sometimes we talk about uh, uh, the sages and then we say, this is a very Asian culture, Asian philosophy, Indian stuff. Socrates is not an Indian guy. <laughs> 
He's a good philosopher. A Westerner. So, that is some something substantial on this planet. There is some substance substance on this planet. There is a philosophical substance on this planet. There is something spiritually substantial on this planet. We have to tap into it. And so Krishna consciousness gives us that opportunity to be able to realize those higher principles in this life. So that someone who has attained Paramatma Hmm. There, there's no question of discrimination. There's no question of bias. No. And you know, women make so many laws uh, just to be able to keep things in order. But except people are actually realized it is so difficult to, to just follow laws. It is so difficult to just follow laws because Otherwise, there wouldn't be, you know, uh, all these red lights, you know, checking people. When you cross the red light at the wrong time, you get a ticket. Later, you see no one is there. But, you know, <laughs> some impersonal photographer is there to take it. <laughs> you know, get, get your information and then, you know, they get your ticket later. So... You have the Brahman and uh, Brahman realization, the Paramatma realization. Paramatma means the Lord in the heart. Ishwara Sabra Bhutta Nam Redi Si Ajuna Tistati. Lord Krishna mentioned, I am the super soul in each and every one's heart. What is the super soul doing there? What is it doing? Just to monitor you? What you have gone wrong? No. He's not just interested in monitoring people who have gone wrong and send them to jail. He's interested in trying to. Uh, create a, con a conducive atmosphere where the conditioned soul could be directed back to seeking for a clearer vision of their pristine identity, of the original identity. And therefore, if we are sincere about our efforts in trying to figure out where we're coming from, where we are going, the super soul is there in our hearts. We can lie to everybody else. The super soul is there in our hearts. We can be so uh, so staunch in doing you know a number of things. But if we recognize that the super soul is there in our hearts, we could really do things in a very astonishing and productive way because we know there is a witness. So yeah, the super soul is there as a witness. But it is not only there to witness any of the uh, any of our mishaps or of, uh, any of our mistakes. It is there to inspire, to motivate us to move forward. In our search for the absolute truth. This is the beauty. Who loves us more than the super soul, more than Krishna? If you mean we are, we, 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 are, we are experiencing the, the most difficult things, the super soul does not abandon us. He is with us. We may say, oh, this is, a, this is my beloved. But if there is some problem, suppose your spouse has so much, is a, a multi-billionaire, and then all the money all of a sudden is gone. I've seen, I've seen cases like that. Wife is very happy, money, I mean, husband is very opulent, or the husband is, the man is very happy because the wife is very wealthy, and all of a sudden there is a mishap. Every, well, all of the wealth is gone. And then at some point in time, you know, they get tired. Of supporting the other party because you know we have our limitations, right? They say, I'm to do it. What do you want? <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't do, I didn't do anything. <laughs> so, the bottom line is that, yeah, Krishna as a super soul is there to help us to grow in our spiritual life. If we just realize that we could just be praying to Krishna. But, you know, the mistake in this on the Paramatma is that we, we are very much vulnerable to being misguided because in a number of, a number of cases, we find people who are just pursuing the, uh, the Brahma, I mean, the Paramatma realization, and they make mistakes. When they, real, when they perceive the super soul and and in humans, what's the size of the Paramatma? Uh, 
uh, like thumb size, mm. right? The size you say? Yeah. Like some thumb size, or they sometimes they say about six or seven inches something. Like anyway, so a pound man buys there. Huh? Yeah. But the point is that the Panama Pan is there to be able to facilitate our needs. Panama Pan is there as a facilitator. But when the uh, Iranian Galbas or the yogis, some of the yogis, when they realize the Panama Pan, the, the vulnerability here is they think, I am that, oh, I have realized myself, so I am God. <laughs> this is the problem without being guided. If you, you, you perceive the Paramatma, and then, because at that time, you know, you could, you could really, look completely different. The tendency is to think, I am that Paramatma. That is the greatest mistake people, the yogis do. And they become like, you know, offenders. It's so, it's so easy. Power intoxicates. And it's so easy for someone who is spiritual to be misled. And so the yogi, some of these unfortunate yogis, is realize the Paramatma, but instead of identifying the Paramatma as the Supreme and the Jiva. Now, there are two souls within this body. One is the Paramatma, one is the Jiva. One is the Vishnu Tattva, and one is the Jiva Tattva. The Paramatma is the uh, Vishnu Tattva. And the individual soul is the Jiva Tattva. The Jiva Tattva is so minuscule, it's so small, it's so infinitesimal. It's not easy for us to, adapt, to, to perceive the, the Jiva Atma even under the highest power of the microscope. But the Paramatma, the yogis realize, they misidentify that the Paramatma to be themselves. And then they begin to become offensive. They think, I am the Paramatma. You are Paramatma. You are the Supreme. You are the Supreme. So this is a very strong misconception that derailed people uh, significantly from the part of self godization So beyond, besides the Paramatma, there is the Bhagavan realization. Uh, the Bhagavan realization is uh, ultimately you find that in Krishna Loka, Krishna is original form, this bluish black, uh, a blackish form of Lord Krishna, plain, plain playing a flute. Papa was mentioning in one lecture uh, that some Westerner, I think some European went to uh, Kolkata and then he went to the different temples and he also came to his uh, Kolkata temple and then at his Kolkata temple he saw Radha, uh, Radha and Krishna. Krishna was playing flute. And so his conclusion was that he said I've been to all these other temples. Some of the temples I've found the, the God, the worship, is fighting. Or he's doing something, he's uh, killing somebody, or, you know, doing something very, you know, really frightening. But he said, but in this temple I come and I see God. He has nothing to do. He's enjoying. He's just he's playing the flute. So don't tell me anything. This, this is God. The other ones, I don't believe that they're God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that God here? Yeah. I, I, I can just see that. No, he just, he's playing. He's just enjoying his life. <laughs> so, even the... So these are basic <laughs> fundamental principles that any intelligent person could just... Uh, admit or make an assessment and conclude his judgment that, yeah, this is it. So, Bhagavan realization is encompassing everything. This, everything is embodied in the Bhagavan realization. Now, even Lord Brahma himself mentions in the Srimad Bhagavatam that a number of yogis, a number of people, when they attend the Brahman effulgence during the time of liberation, at the time they leave their bodies, they attend the Brahman effulgence. Now, the tendency is uh, just to enjoy that because a lot, Brahman Fortune is full of happiness and we are looking for happiness in this world. So you attain that position, a uh, tendency just to be comfortable and then you keep enjoying. 
and they forgot that uh, you have to really associate. And then at some point in time, no matter how much money you have, you can't just enjoy yourself internally or for a long, you can't have lasting enjoyment just by yourself. You need some association. And that is why, you know, people, they work so hard, they got so many degrees, they acquired the money, they got so much money, but ultimately they have to settle down with somebody. They need a family, they need someone to, to enjoy their wealth with them. Because, you know, you can't just enjoy alone. <laughs> it's the, you, you, you feel dry. You can't just enjoy by yourself alone. And so, people, you know, when the, when the yogi attains even the Brahmana fortunes, at some point in time, they get freaked out because they don't have association. And they want to come back to, you know, to the material world, or they are forced to come back to the material world to engage in some uh, philanthropic activities, you know, some pious activities. And so Lord Brahma said, uh, that, you know, such people, they come back, you know, <clears throat> they come to this material world. Uh, <clears throat> that's a particular verse, I don't, I don't, I can't exactly. You know, the verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam where Lord Brahma says, uh, that, you know, those, are we so, yeah, 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 Arya Krishna Param Padam Pata Patantya Do Nadista Yusman Angre. So Lord Brahma mentioned that. Yeah, <clears throat> they claim that they are liberated. But my conclusion is that are we sue the Buddha. They are we sue the Buddha. They are just liberated the mind. Because they, they are there, they are not going to be satisfied for a long time. They're not going to be satisfied with just living by themselves in that Brahman fortune, so they will fall down again. Papa also mentioned that in the, <coughs> in the PowerPoint. So, <coughs> the idea is that people, we need association, we need Sangha. We can't be by ourselves. Even the super soul has an associate. The super soul in the heart has an associate. The part, um, is it Jiva? <laughs> yeah. And therefore, <coughs> uh, the attainment of the of the Brahman effulgence is not the is not the end all or be all. It's just a step a stepping stone. So, in the very literature, the delineation is properly uh, given, and the tendency for people to become entrapped in the Brahman effulgence is minimized because they realize that. People realize that the authorities, Brahma is the chief authority of, on, of, of this universe, not just this planet, but this universe. So, Lord Brahma says, <coughs> that those who attain the Brahman effulgence, uh, this, the, the probability of them falling down to this material world uh, is, is very high. It's most, the, imp, the, the improbability of their not falling down is one infinity. In other words, the probability of falling down from that Brahman effulgence is very high. Why? Because they don't have association. Yeah, they are full of happiness, they are eternal, but, you know, the living entity wants association. And therefore, it is befitting that one struggles to attain uh, the Bhagavan realization. Because the Bhagavan realization you have all of these facilities in the spiritual world, whether you go to Vaikuntha Loka, there are so many people there, you can have good association. If you go to uh, Krishna Loka, oh my God. There's so much variegatedness of enjoyment. You can have, you know, anything you need. You don't have to work so hard to be happy. You don't have to work so hard to buy something to eat. In fact, even in, in the spiritual world, uh, the fruits, I mean, the trees are, are called Viksha trees. You go to one tree, if you go to an orange tree, you can get your uh, papaya, your, 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 uh, your papa, your banana, your mango, everything. Whatever you wish, whatever it is there, the tree just manifests. So, 
<laughs> and you know, in the spiritual world, people they live in the the people they are they're super they superlatively superlatively handsome, superlatively attractive. What are we doing here in this material world? And these are bodies are very perishable. Huh? Very perishable. They are the bodies are not perishable. So there is, there is the ocean. <laughs> you go to, here you can you, you can't even go to bed in the uh, in, in the ocean because it's salty. Because you're afraid of getting some contamination or even just the salt alone on your skin. I mean, it could be so. Uh, it could be so undesirable. But in the spiritual world, there are different there are different oceans. If you if you if you are the type that you know wants to bathe in the milk ocean, wow, it's there. <laughs> <coughs> so you know, some of the people ask, you know, going to the spiritual world, I'm I'm okay here. Good yet to do what? <laughs> I have everything here. Why should I what why should I struggle to go there for what? I'm happy here. Yeah. We may be happy here, but the happiness cannot be compared to the one in the spiritual world. I mean it's like a drop of water in the ocean. And therefore it is important to follow Papa's instructions here. Now if we want if we participate in Christian consciousness, if we get involved in Christian consciousness doing devotional service, following the standard of the nine processes, hearing, serving and catering, hearing and chanting, beginning with hearing and chanting, doing some service, doing some service. So here's the temple. If you ask yourself, I'll be coming here for you know one month, two months, three months, you ask yourself, what service am I rendering to Krishna? Because without service, we don't get quickly purified. We can come and hear the lectures, but then we should we should ask, you know, the temple management, what service can I what service can I do? We should have a sense of belonging. Devotional service is not some just some dry uh, dry philosophy. It is something very practical that we do and we we have uh, we have realizations. So we turn on a Christian means. We ask him for service. We're begging Krishna, please, Lord Krishna, engage me in your service. Krishna, uh, Hare, uh, Krishna, Rama, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the reservoir of all pleasure, a devotional principle, devotional energy of the Lord. Please engage me in your service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama Hare Hare. So, the, the, the prescribed method of attaining even the Brahman effulgence that is so uh, intriguing as described in this text, we don't need to pursue that. We do, we perform devotional service, and uh, you know, that is already you know, part and parcel of the devotional culture. You will attain that level of realization uh, very quickly. You, I mean, you don't even know that you've attained it, you just, you know, you just pass through. And so we have to think about this. Realizing the Lord, the sum and substance of this text is that the Lord could be realized on three phases. The Brahma, the spirit, the Paramatma, the super soul, and the Bhagwan, the personality of God. It's like a trinity, God in three persons. <clears throat> the Brahman effulgence, the Paramatma realization and the Bhagwan realization. The spirit realization is all pervasive, the Brahman Jyoti, effulgence of the Lord, permeated, permeating the whole of the cosmos. The Paramatma, the Lord in the heart, or the Super Soul, and the Supreme Presence of God who is residing in his own kingdom in the spiritual world. And we are all, you know, <clears throat> Human beings, we are created in the image of God. The Bible tells us we're created in the image of God. Yeah, Krishna has two hands, two legs, like us. 
But it's not white, it's not black, because if it's white or black, so we'll start fighting and claiming it's about, it's about God. It's blue is black, so you tell me which which race that is it's blue is black. So we can claim him. It's God for everybody. So he has two hands, like we do. One head, two eyes, two nostrils, one mouth. <laughs> but his body is eternal. He's full of knowledge. And it's all full of bliss without taking any intoxications. <laughs> and the process of attaining that supreme person is given in the Vedic literature, in the Bhagavad Gita. It begins with chanting. Or in the Kali Yoga, in this present dispensation, there's no need to endeavor so much for so many things. The beginning, the middle, and the end is chanting of Krishna's holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Ram Hare Hare. So any, any comments or questions so far? Yeah, we are not. Yes, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, I was thinking, you know, there's a. It was talking about a, a progression from 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 the spirit to the to the Paramatma to to God to Krishna, and and as grown up in Christianity, like hardcore Christianity, you kind of already have that understanding as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So I feel, as a little girl, I've understood Paramatma, God, God in my heart. And as a little girl, I've always did some devotional service. So you may be uh, giving out flyers for Bible club or whatever it is. So, so now that I'm here, right, solidifying my practice, I, I, I don't understand why it's so difficult to cultivate like bhakti or attraction to a, to, to a, to a bhakti, like mm -hmm. the attraction to not really kirtan, but like, like serving others. Or, or just service in general, like why is it so hard to, mm. to cultivate that? Like for Krishna, I have it, but for other people, it's it's, yeah. it's a, like a whole different ball game, mm. and I'm just trying to figure out. Sure, why is it difficult? difficult? Yeah, yeah, or like what what is it that we can do to uh, to develop that that more so attraction or mm. whatever it is? Okay, thank you. It's a nice point. Okay, I'm serving I'm serving Krishna. Um, doing some service of Krishna, but what is what can I do to facilitate service to devotees? And uh, because service to devotees, serving Krishna by <coughs> Krishna Himself, I, I mean, uh, it, it's so it's so difficult, and we don't really we're not there yet. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, first thing is philosophy. We have to understand what. What are the implications of not serving the devotees? So I give you a short, a brief story. When, <clears throat> when Mother Yasoda was trying to bind Lord Krishna with, to the wooden garden model, he she tried to do that, and each time you have, like, you know, like three, 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 three fingers that of the rope short, short of like three fingers, and so. Our chariots, I don't know the exact person, I don't know whether it's Vishnu Chakravati or someone else, it mentions that, it mentions the significance of that. That yes, our personal effort in devotional service, good. Now, that personal effort should be accompanied with the mercy of the devotees, the mercy of the spiritual master. Because we are not really seeing Krishna. We are seeing the devotees around us. <clears throat> and therefore, our relationship with other devotees is what is going to appear, what's going to be real, most appealing to Krishna. And therefore, the way that we can really appeal to other people is to try to serve them. Now, why we why why should we serve them? We see. <laughs> I, I remember, you know, uh I one of my writings said. My master thesis, I, I was mentioning, I was writing something on service. And so here, the, one of the reviewers of the paper who didn't know anything about Krishna consciousness, <laughs> he said, oh, I mean, she was a lady, 
She said, what you said there is really practical. <laughs> so I was mentioning that. See, even the president of the country is actually serving. He's a servant. He's serving his country. The breadwinner of the family is actually a servant. He's serving his family or her family. He's serving the children, serving the, you know, the parents, serving everybody in the family. But the difficulty is that we are confronted with an uh, intrinsic negative tendency and that is our issue above. We like to control, Papa mentioned in the purple. We like to control. And sometimes it's just like a big struggle, a big fight. Even children. These days you go to some homes and then the child is the one who has, who has to, you know, choose the station, of, um, 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 the channel. And if you don't allow them to do that, there's a fight. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the parents, they just surrender to the child because it's just going to bring a fight. So even as a child, we have that issue above. As we are growing up, that issue above does not leave us alone. So if we all recognize that my issue above is creating a limitation in my tendency or in my uh, inclination to serve others, then that brings us to the level that we are conscious of what is obstructing our service attitude to others. And then we have to mellow down on that uh, issue about. In fact, we don't lose anything if we simply ask others, okay, what's your opinion? What to do? Okay, this is what we have to do. Okay, let's, let's do it in the way you want. He saves so much trouble. <laughs> he saves so much trouble, you know? But if I want to do it in my own way, I say, look, you know, I'm just family. This is what you have to do, okay? You do it or you leave it. Now, it doesn't take people to anywhere. Because even in your homes, if you have a child of 11, 12 years, if you, if you are really, if you really understand what is family development, you will seek opinion of your child who is 11 or 12 years. Why? Because 11 or 12 years, both kids have attained puberty. And someone has attained puberty, the brain is fully developed like that of a 50 years old person. You may see them as a small body. But you do something and you think that they will, they will, they will let you go. You go, you go free. No. They may, not, they may not have the guts to tell you. You may play around. You may play your wife. You may play your husband. You may play your father. But if you're a child, 11 years old, you can't play them. They may not tell you. They may not challenge you. But at the proper time, when you say something, they will talk to you back. And so, we have that issue above, we tend to control, and we don't want to bring out our service attitude. The service also is there. The service attitude is also there. There are two things there. Issue above and service attitude. <laughs> service attitude. But issue above tends to over overwhelm us. And so, when we recognize that this is an obstacle, then we give a, we give a room to the service attitude. That concept of dasa dasa anu das. I'm a servant of the servant of the servant. I need to really do that. Look, when we go to work, what are we doing? We're serving. We're serving. Whether we like it or not, we are servants. Even the managing director in the office, he is serving the organization. <laughs> He's serving the organization, yeah. And so why don't we transfer that service attitude to our family members? Why don't you transfer that service attitude to the community of devotees? Why don't you serve, transfer that service attitude to our friends? And talking about this right about, that creates a lot of conflict even in families. Especially within the patriarchal system. You know, the man is always thinking, I am the controller. Whatever I say should be final. These days, we find a number of women, they don't, they don't want to compromise with anything that is not what they desire or what they want. So it's both ways. And therefore, the main obstacle is the issue above. Bring in, I mean, bring out, invoke that service attitude, that's a, that's a anu, that's conception, and use that in place of the issue above. And that gives way for, you know, real mutual coexistence, relation, good relationship, friendliness, and everything that you can think of. And then your growth in devotional service becomes superlatively high. 
It's so easy to serve Krishna. But, you know, without pleasing his devotees, we're going nowhere. Because when you go, when you say, when you knock on the door of Lord Krishna, and it's a spiritual word, it was so, where are the people you brought along with you? <laughs> but without being friendly, without that loving relationship, I mean, who is going to align with you to go to where you want to go? And more so, like, the attachment. Like, where does the attachment come in? You know what I mean? Mm. You can have a taste for it, but where is the attachment? Attachment for what? For, for service. Because attachment for I service. so much people who have it, you know. And attachment like, for service is coming, coming from, from, you know, uh, Lord Christian missions in the Gita by practice, repeated practice. Mm. If you go on doing something, you become attached to it. I, I'll give you one example. In bonding. In bonding. Bond. Huh? Bonding? Yeah. B-O-N-D. Oh, bond. But yeah. If you want to create a bond with someone, keep talking to them. And very soon you become attached. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So, you want to be attached to Krishna, just keep chanting his holy names. You want to be attached to service, just doing, keep doing some service. And then, at some point in time, any day you don't, you, 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 you are lacking in it, you become restless. So it's a matter of, you know, repeatedly doing it. Yeah. It's a practice that we need to do. Like, if you are good, if you are someone who is going out to do something every day, the day, maybe, maybe you are not even, you are you're not healthy, doctor says, okay, you rest today, you feel, still feel restless, you want to go. <laughs> Because that has been a habit. Right. Habit creates your future. Yeah. What we do repeatedly turns into a habit. And habits are very difficult to give up. You have to go into some real, you know, therapy to be able to unlearn it, to undo it. So service is also like that. Devotional service is also like that. We just practice. It might not be so juicy in the beginning, but we, with, uh, like I mentioned, philosophy. We understand this is going to, this is the goal. This is where it's going to lead me. This habit or this practice, this is where it's going to lead me. It's going to lead me to attach, attachment to Krishna, attachment to service. So, even we don't feel f so, it's, it's not so juicy to do it, we just force ourselves to do it. And at some point in time, it becomes very spontaneous and juicy. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Yes, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, I'm having a hard time with the Hindu words mm. to be able, like you said in the beginning, it cleans your soul and it, it just helps with what people do. But a lot of times I'll skip over it and just read the English part because I'm having such a hard time with it. You know what I can do to, like, I want to be able to understand it. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, what would happen? I'd give you my own personal, practical example. When I joined the temple when I was, you know, pretty uh, young, in my middle 20s, 25, 26 or so. So, I didn't, because I, I thought, as a brahmacharya, I'm going out to preach. I'm not going to start talking to people in Sanskrit. <laughs> Let me understand the philosophy. <laughs> so, I would, I would just read voraciously to understand the, uh, the, the fundamental principles of the philosophy. And it has served a lot. But then, as years uh, unfold, if I'm reading something, there are some things that I read, and even some texts, like, you know, the verse I quoted here that, you know, uh, Atma uh, uh, facilitated the in, uh, invocation of it. No, that verse, like, the first time I read it in the Bible time, I mean, it just seemed to me that I know this thing before. So, I mean, I just repeat it for like, you know, uh, two, or, two or three times, and then, you know, I just, I just, you know, became embedded in my, in my mind. And I didn't make endeavor for it. So, what I did was just to read voraciously and, uh, you know, get the, get the knowledge to be able to interact with people and talk to people. And these Sanskrit things became like a secondary thing that I did at some point in time. And some devotees, right from the beginning, they were memorizing verses, and uh, that I appreciate that, but I had a different approach. Yeah, I, I had a different approach. So for, for you, I would suggest, for now, you need a strong foundation in the philosophy to be able to defend what you're doing, 
What you're practicing, if someone comes to challenge you, so read and don't don't just uh, feel frustrated when you when you do, you're not get, you're not really attracted to the Sanskrit words for now. Read the philosophy because the good thing is the prophet has given his text in such a way that most of the words he used he gives uh, an explanation or uh, a meaning. Yeah, so like even the word-for-word -word translation, that's, those are good things. But you know, those things, they, they, they sap your energy. They, they, they really like, you know, pull you. So for you, I would suggest just read the English, get grounded in the philosophy, and as in the future, you will be attracted to that, to the Sanskrit also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. All right, in the absence of, okay. Devotional service more important than chanting? Ah, uh, chanting is part of devotional service. It's actually the foundation of devotional service. Devotional service basically implies principles or processes, and the chanting is one of the is the preeminent process. It's the beginning, the end, the middle, and then the end. If you when we are chanting, we are actually asking Lord Krishna to engage us in His service. That's why I was mentioning about service. So. Chanting and devotional service, they are not different, but they are different. Because chanting is a process in devotional service. It's the foundation of devotional service. Devotional service entails hearing and chanting and a number of other processes. Okay? Yeah. Any other comments or questions? In the, okay. When you, you're getting towards the point when you feel like, um, Needing a guru, I mean, is that something you really consciously look for, or you just sort of let that intuitively happen by way of being involved with the people that you're that you're associating with, in terms mm. that are maybe more Krishna conscious than you and or are devotees? I mean, how do you approach it, or is it just is it different for every individual? Yeah, uh, basically, it is different for individuals, and <clears throat> I would say based on my. Uh, Limited lived experience. I've seen cases where, you know, people are not really attracted to accepting shelter from anybody for a long time. There are some people in the beginning they are uh, they like to align with somebody, and then in some cases later they they feel that uh, oh uh, they, they they were quick or they made some wrong choice or something like that. Uh, so I would suggest that the best thing is to be able to. If you will come to a devotional service, we should read Prabhupada's books, associate with devotees, see Prabhupada as our grand spiritual master, and read his books. And then when we listen, when we listen to different speakers, these are different speakers, and see the person, figure out who is the person that are most aligned with their teachings or what they speak. Which of these really touches my heart the most? Which of which of these speakers that touches my points, my my, my needs, without even without me telling the person that you know this is my problem or this is my situation? So then basically you realize that that sort of a situation could help you better and accessibility. If you accept someone like I was in South America at one time. And uh, the boy, the devotee, Brahmacharya, who came helping me, I asked him, well, who is this, whom is he aspiring for? He said, uh, he gave me the number one Swami in India. He's an American, uh, he's, he's a European, but he lives in India. So I said, has he ever been to your, to your country? He said, no. I said, so how you gonna, uh, have you been communicating with him? He said, no. I said, but you know, in the Gita, I said, in the Gita, Lord Krishna was speaking to Arjuna. Arjuna had Lord Krishna as his guru. Krishna, he was speaking to Lord Krishna face to face. <laughs> and Krishna was clarifying, clarifying all of his ambiguities. ambiguities. I said, accepting a guru should not be based on, you know, you hear yeah, this is a very great personality, he's a very popular personality, and uh, he has many disciples all over the world, and then uh, you, you get enamored by the external features and not really understanding the essence of the relationship. It's a very strong and deep relationship. It's a relationship that you need to understand that this person, I should be able to have access to him at the time I needed him the most. So later, you know, he changed his mind. And then he approached 
somebody who has been coming to his country. <laughs> I mean, that was a practical approach. And so sometimes we need to have some proper understanding about the process of uh, aligning with someone. Because we will have some problems at some point in time of our spiritual life. <laughs> we'll, be confronted, we'll be at the crossroad. Is this person accessible to me? Any other comments? All right. In the absence of any other, any other team, any other discussions, we'll, uh, we'll adjourn this meeting. We'll continue with the theater. Thank you very much for participating in this Krishna Consciousness.